From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Right down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This story from a website called LiveScience.com. It was repeated on the Yahoo News website. LiveScience.com. And uh, once again, science uh, science proves the stuff that uh, we all tend to believe, but we can't necessarily prove. That's where science steps in. Here it is. When it comes to one-night stands, men and women are poles apart, if you know what I mean. No, I added that. <laughs> Guys just want, well, you know. This is LifeScience.com. They don't want to say sex. They say, well, you know. Like that guy in the Larry H. Parker commercial. You know the story. While gals, gals, go to bed with the false impression of flattery and a craving for feeling desirable. The upshot, according to new research, is great for most men <laughs> and the pits for most women. The study goes further under the covers, delving into the nuances of casual sex and its potential as a Venus and Mars minefield. Among the findings, women were not hooking up in an effort to secure a long-term bow. But because they felt flattered by the overnight proposition, they were mistaken. I can't speak for the women, but as a man, there's no shock here. You didn't need a study. It says here, as the researcher points out, and as we have pointed out repeatedly on this program, men lower their standards. When it comes to one night stands. So the presumed flattery is a fantasy or close to it. Researcher Ann Campbell, psychologist at Durham University in England said, often women said things like, I felt so flattered. So happy that he found me attractive. It was so nice to be wanted. What women don't seem to see is that men drop their standards massively for a one-night stand. She added, no woman should be flattered because a man wants to have sex with her once. <laughs> it's the human toilet theory. There's only a couple of gas stations, uh, you know, between uh, I-10 and Las Vegas. With uh, unlocked men's rooms. you got to pull into whatever filthy, grimy men's room is open on that long, dark stretch. And hopefully, you'll never have to go back there again. <laughs> how many of you have... Um, how many of you have relieved yourselves at that grimy Chevron station somewhere along the way? Or the that uh, filthy Shell station? How many of you have done that? I mean, you didn't even want to touch the doorknob when you walked out, right? <laughs> Fluorescent lighting, you looked horrible. A little bit of that, that aroma in the air. 
Ever go into a bathroom so grimy you just don't want to touch anything? You unzip your fly, get into position, aim as carefully as you can, and then try to get out like the touchless car wash, try to get out without touching anything? (laughs) Many times this bathroom doesn't even have like paper towels or toilet paper. So you go in, you do the best you can, you shake it off, and you get the hell out of there, right? Now, how many of you have done that with women? (laughs) When you got to go, you got to go. This program, many times, and what I'm about to say is completely clinical, when I've said on this program many times that for many men, uh, ejaculation is like urination. It's essentially the same thing. When you got to go, you got to go. So while you would love to be using the men's room at the Four Seasons or the Beverly Hills Hotel, if all you've got is that grimy shell station somewhere out near Banning, (laughs) Barstow, (laughs) Baker, and all those other desolate California towns that begin with B, (laughs) if you're lucky... The convenience store attached to that bathroom will have a B. <laughs> but nonetheless, anybody who's ever pulled off the road in one of those towns and used the bathroom, you know what we mean by saying that the one-night stand is kind of the same thing. All right? It's just like gasoline. If you drive a good car, honestly speaking, If you drive a good car, you generally, no matter how expensive gas is, you generally take it to one of the big name gas stations, right? Here in L.A., it would be, uh, you know, uh, Mobile, Exxon, Shell, Chevron, um, maybe Arco. And even Arco, you're always suspicious because it's cheaper than the other ones, right? And Valero. What's that all about? (laughs) That's if you spend a lot of money, you're really a a freak about keeping your car nice. Okay, but every once in a while, you're you're near E, and all that's there is like USA gasoline or United Oil or one of those gas stations you don't pretty you you, that you don't recognize, right? So you pull in, (laughs) you pull in, and you get gas there. But my God, you're not going to make a habit out of it. (laughs) Because you've bought into all the commercials with the cute little cars talking about Tecron and stuff. You believe your engine is getting scrubbed and all that other nonsense that these companies say. You believe that. (laughs) So you tend to take your car into the name brand gas station. But every once in a while, come on, admit it. You've pulled into Ted's gasoline and you have put the pump in without knowing what's coming out of that pump. And it's kind of the same thing with the one-night stand. Right? This story continues. It says here, while most research on the topic of casual sex has relied on fictitious vignettes or just having participants imagine they had a one-night stand, the new findings are based on self-reports of feelings following an actual hookup. Campbell says in the June issue of the journal Human Nature that the findings suggest women are not well adapted to promiscuity. See, we've been reading stories about this recently. Women, much as they say they want to hook up as much as men do, the research says otherwise. Says here, women have much more to lose while men are in a win-win situation for the ladies. A baby on the way is a huge responsibility, but a guy can just bail. Well, many times he has to pay for it, but hey. Todd Shackelford, an evolutionary psychologist at Florida Atlantic University who was not involved with the current study, but they needed to fill space in the article, he said, the bottom line is the risks are potentially greater for women. It's not surprising. They indicate the experience is somewhat less positive, but importantly, somewhat more negative. And why do we care as guys? Just keep putting out, girls. That's all we care about. Says here, however, promiscuity does offer natural advantages for women from an evolutionary perspective, Shackelford said. 
These advantages could explain why women participate in one-night stands, even though they feel so lousy afterward. If you do them right. I added that. Says here, flings provide women with the potential to snag the best genes for offspring. Or they can be spurred by a chemical nudge at the peak of the menstrual cycle. Campbell surveyed more than 3,300 individuals, most of whom are between the ages of 17 and 40 of the heterosexual respondents. More than half reported a one-night stand about evenly split between men and women. Overall, women's morning after feelings were more negative than men's, while 80% of men had overall positive feelings just 54% of women had positive feelings. That's still more than half. Women predominantly reported, quote, regret at being used. <laughs> With additional comments including, I felt cheap, horrified afterward, and I felt degraded, made myself look cheap and easy. Total regret. Contrary to popular belief, Women said they didn't view casual sex as a prelude to a long-term relationship. Campbell told Live Science, it's not that they wanted the man to whisk them off and marry them. It's that they wanted the man to understand that they weren't like this normally. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I don't usually do this. <laughs> no, only when you're with a guy who's really hot, or really rich, or really powerful, or really successful. That's the only time you do it. The rest of the time, you make guys jump through hoops. Sweetheart, I understand. You know, like the chicks who jump into bed with me because I'm the Tom Likas show? You know, darling, I know you're not like this usually. I know that Joey, who works as a stock boy down at the grocery store, is going to have to take you out to El Torito a few times. Buy you a couple of margaritas. Tell you how beautiful you are. But I know because I'm a multimillionaire, I don't have to tell you any of that stuff. You'll jump into the sack with me. It's kind of an investment in the future. You know, I don't usually do this. <laughs> but you're going to do it with me. Yes, you are. Because you know what I don't usually do? Waste time with women who don't put out. <laughs> you know, if I were at a concert with a woman, I'd say, you know, I don't usually do this. I wouldn't want them to get the idea that I'm always, like, going out to dinner or going to concerts or something like that. Unbelievable. Says your men reported feelings of success since the partner was desirable to others and found the experience is much more sexually satisfying than women did. Of course, we got what we wanted. Typical positive comments from men included euphoric, excitement, and lust. And I believe, girls, last time you thought you had that romantic encounter with a guy, here's what he said. I believe that one-night stands are a good way of blowing off steam. <laughs> You're a ventilator, darling. You're a human toilet. You're a ventilator. You're a human tea kettle. <laughs> yes, it says here, for men who reported negative feelings. All right, Poindexter, what was the problem there? The prevailing tone was one of emptiness and loneliness. My goodness, I'm always relieved when they leave, or when I leave, relieved. Says here, why then, if women feel so crappy after a casual roll in the hay, do they hop in again? They could be collecting healthy genes for their offspring. Oh, boy. So even if a woman can't score a lengthy relationship with a guy whose sperm could offer, say, disease-resistant genes or genes for a particular kind of intelligence, her thinking might be, why not grab the guy for sex? If you've got a Brad Pitt character, absolutely gorgeous and incredibly loaded with money and so on, the chances of getting him to commit to you for the rest of your life are pretty slim, Campbell said. But the chances of him giving you a half an hour on a Wednesday afternoon in a hotel are probably much better. <laughs> That's true for Brad Pitt. It's true for Felix the Cat. It's true for Elmer Fudd. Okay, whoever you meet.
Guys will be happy to give you a half hour in a hotel room. I'll tell you right now. So the bottom line here is that, uh, once again, more scientific evidence that while women say they love to hook up, the reality is they feel lousy afterwards. And the reality is, as a guy, I don't care as long as I got what I wanted. You know what I'm talking about? So uh, I'm wondering if any of this rings true for you regarding one-night stands. Do you feel great after a one-night stand? Do you feel lousy? Do you feel lonely? Lonely? Empty? I feel so empty. <laughs> Funny, I don't feel that. Funny, when I jump into the sack with a new piece of meat and then kick it out and make it get a camp, I, I feel fantastic. It's like getting something for nothing that other people pay for. How great is that? Tom Likens. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. What's at the base of all of this, you know, uh, banging chicks? It's like, it's kind of a biological urge. What's at the base of eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day? <laughs> okay, all right. It's the Tom Likens Show. They're playing our song, honey. Tom Like It Show, 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are. Together again on the radio tonight. More scientific research this time on the reality of one night stands. The reality is. Men will bang anything for one night only. And uh, women are deluded into believing that somehow they are particularly appealing, hot, attractive, when in reality, it's one stall, no waiting. 1-800-5-800-TOM, that's our telephone number. It's Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Jennifer. Tom, oh, what's going on? Doing a radio show here, darling. Well, take it easy on me. It's my first time. But I had a couple of things to say. When I was 17, I had a bet on who could take my virginity. There were three guys that bet on who could take it. And I I don't know. I think as young women, I think we feel that way in what the survey was saying. But now that I'm older, I think a one-night stand is fantastic, and I actually prefer them. You prefer them? Yeah, you can have a little bit more fun. You can do something different every time. It's not emotional for me. It's it's just about having a good time. But I don't lower my standards on a one-night stand either. So maybe that's a difference between me and I see. Women. And your number is what now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that as we when we were growing up, we were told that sex is for marriage, sex is for having kids, and it's not for enjoyment. So when somebody wants to have sex with you, to us, to women, it meant, you know, this guy wants to get serious with us. He's attracted to us. He, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't, said, I'm amazed that women believe that. I know, I know the science says that's true, and I know it from anecdotal evidence. But as a man, I'm amazed that women actually believe that. Well, when you're brought up and being told that from a young age. That's because you know, your mother was delusional. Well, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> father never talked to me about sex, so he didn't do his job either. Right. And your mother read you, uh, you know, Cinderella? Well, my mom was also a virgin when she got married. Oh. Was married go. for 25 years. Was married for 25 years, and your dad probably married her because he wanted to get laid and she wouldn't give it to him. No, my mom was the hot one. My dad got remarried to an ugly one, so... <laughs> Uh -huh. An ugly one who doesn't think your mom wouldn't do. <laughs> no, but I think it's, it's that's hard. how it works, dear. Come on. Son? When 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 somebody remarries the fat ugly one over the hot one, that means the hot one said, "Ew, I don't want to do that. Ew, I never heard of that. Ew." No, she's not. She's a skinny hot one or ugly one, but. Oh, but, but fat or fugly or both, all right, to be specific. But you know what I'm talking about. When you go after those, when you go after those, it's because, yeah, because it's your dad, it's kind of hard to think about these things. But let me break it down for you. 
And clearly, the fugly one is willing to do things that your hot mom would not do. Yeah. And she's 10 years younger. We don't know what those things are. And she's 10 years younger. We don't know what those things are. Right. But clearly, there's something yeah. that, that your dad wants. Probably yeah. things that you're open to, but uh, that your mom is not. Right. Because your mom, mom was a virgin when she got married. Right. I lost mine at 17 to a semi-one-night stand. <laughs> a semi one is that What is that, a two-night stand? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we were friends, and we went out and that kind of stuff. I thought we were going to have more, though, than just a one-night stand. And then to find out he made 200 bucks off of it kind of stung a little, too. He made 200 bucks? What was it, a bet? Yeah, I had three guys that were bet each other that one of them could take my virginity. Wow. Yeah. That doesn't feel good to hear it after the fact, though. So after that, you just decided to slut yourself up there just to have sex with anything and uh, everyone? No, I got into some different relationships, but guys are full of BS. I think they BS themselves as much as they BS us. So. Um, well, I think they BS themselves about some things, but uh, the reality is a, a lot of the BS that women perceive in men, it, we're really not actually saying any of that stuff. A lot of it is assumed. I can't tell you how many women I have had sex with who assumed that because we had sex, they were my girlfriend. That assumed that because we spent a night together, that that meant something and that it was going to continue on from there. Right. They, and, and then, of course, later on, they tell other people what a liar I am or what a creep I am. But, but I never actually said anything. I'm very careful not to say anything. Right. Like I tell the guys all the time, I say, look... Just say as little as possible. Let that's, them blab. That's a part of the reason I love your show is because I think guys should be like that. I go out and I meet somebody and I just want to hook up and they start telling me stuff about, you know, this and that and they're great. They make money. They do this. They do that. And they could treat me well. I don't want to hear that. It makes me want to vomit. Because when first meeting somebody, you can't feel that way about somebody and you shouldn't be promising them things. You should take it as it is, and guys shouldn't try to BS their way into the sack. Um, well, I mean, put it this way. With you, that's true. Well, I, I, with me, that's true, but they still shouldn't try to BS somebody else by telling them things that well, they don't. Well, I, I put it this way. I find it inconvenient to do that, and I also find women will tell themselves enough lies about me. I don't have to make any up. Like, women will tell themselves that I'm into them, I I could love them, that this could be something. They'll tell themselves that. I don't need to say a word. They will think it. Yeah. There's nothing, uh, and I'm being honest with you, and I'm gloating here for a moment. Nothing is more satisfying in life than to have a woman say, you're a creep. You know, I, I thought I meant something to you, and I say to them, I never said a word about that. We were having fun. What's right. the problem? Did I ever say anything? And when they think about it, it's like, hmm, no. Yeah. So what made you think that this was anything but what it was? We were having a good time. You were having a good time. I was having a good time. I never promised you anything. You assumed. And they, they can't argue. They can't. I have the same experience with men, though, that you have with women. Men can't drift. Dri dri I can't even say it. They can't separate sex from relationships. Well, there's a certain amount of that. Yes, Poindexter is like that because he has very little experience with girls, okay? But then there's also the guys who just always lie to get sex. Right. And when they meet you, they don't know they don't have to lie to get it, so they'll start telling you all this stuff thinking that's what's going to seal the deal. And you have to understand how many women out there that does seal the deal. Maybe that's why I don't like it. It makes me feel so good to turn down a guy that comes up with the lines and go out with a guy that's just having a drink, being himself. Well, but again, you you have kind of an open sexuality, an open attitude about sex. Many women are using sex as a bargaining chip, especially your age. I see you're 33 years old. Many women are like, you know, the, the biological time clock is ticking. My window of opportunity is starting to close. I've got to close a deal here somewhere along the line. And uh, you are not uh, what what is normally out there. What is normally out there are women who are looking for you to say the magic words. Uh, le, 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 uh, 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 uh. Can't say it. Uh, but, but there's women who are waiting to get that affirmation. 
Right. So there are guys who are all too willing to jump and go, I can see myself with you 10 years down the line, 15 years. I can see us growing old together. The oldest lines of the book, and they work on many women, probably I'd say the majority of women. But what but, but I always say is that that makes it extra hard to get rid of those women when you want to get rid of them. Right. And that's so I love- never, ever tell them I see myself getting old with them or I, I can see a future or yeah. I, I just don't say those things. They will tell themselves these lies. Guys do too by lying to them, you know, then all of a sudden they're psycho witches, even though they've been telling them all this stuff and they can't understand why they can't get rid of this girl. That part is, is true for many guys. That's true. Situation. He's so burning I- the house down and I can't figure out why. We were just having sex. We were having a good time. Now she's burning my house down. Well, <laughs> so I, I just, but here's the thing. Some women burn your house down, and you never even said anything to them. Yeah, some men could do it too, though. Well, I know, but that's a whole that for other reasons. Yeah, for, for other reasons, dear. We're just talking about one night stands and about sex versus love, and 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 what I'm saying is, uh, there are women who burn down your house because in their mind they told themselves that this was true love. Yes. When in reality, you never said a word. I think that goes back to what I said about how we are raised as women. You have to remember, I, yeah, I, I can't tell you how many women I've dated who say things like, you know, you never tell me what you think about me. <laughs> that means they're just not that into you, so move on. No, that's not what it means. It, but what it means is I like having sex with you. Uh, you are tolerable to hang out with. We have fun hanging out. But there's really nothing else to say. I mean, what I'm, it, it, I, I, you know, I'm a regular customer. I keep coming back for the spaghetti. I like it, so I keep coming back for it. But you know, is it a great gourmet restaurant that I'd want to own someday? No. Well, it's it's it a is, nice though. bowl of spaghetti at a checkered tablecloth. I think everybody should be upfront with everybody. Some women are bowls of spaghetti at a checkered tablecloth. Some women are Toyota Corollas. <laughs> Most guys are married to a Toyota Corolla. And you know what a Toyota Corolla is? Lasts forever. You know, good good gas mileage. Not terribly sexy or stylish. Yeah. You know, and, and every guy out there, and I, I think the world of Toyota, Lexus, I mean, I'm, I'm a freak. I, I've owned nothing but Toyota and Lexus products now for the past 11 years. And I, 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 I swear by them. But I would guess that 99% of the guys who own Toyota Corollas, if they won the lottery, they'd go right down to their Lexus dealer and trade that Toyota Corolla in for the Lexus LS460. Yeah. (laughs) That day! Life, absolutely. And the same thing goes for their wives who are Toyota Corollas. Well, you know, we had a lot of miles together, but uh, I smelled the leather in that Lexus. Now I can afford to drive her home. That's why women in their early 30s, like, my sexual peak was at 30. And I was together with a guy from 31 to 32, and he almost killed me. I, for one, believe they ought to have personal ads in the auto trader. What's that? I, for one, believe they ought to have personal ads in the auto trader. Not a bad idea, actually. You know, there are women out there who could advertise themselves as a 97 BMW. <laughs> not a bad idea. You know, 86 Mercedes. It's a language. You know, those real housewives of Orange County. You know, those are like 89 Mercedes. Yeah. Convertible. <laughs> With the boob jobs and stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, they they had they, they were a comfy ride for somebody back around 1989, 88, something like that. Right. Except all of Orange County is driven in them by now. <laughs> somebody out there, though, could not afford them way back when they were new. So there'll always be a new owner, but the quality of the owner will continue to go downhill as the cars get older. <laughs> it's all relative, Tom. You damn straight it is. Like this. one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Can you name five things women are good for? Yes, cooking, cleaning. <laughs> ironing, packing my things when I leave town, <laughs> preparing my documents for when I leave the country. It's the Tom Likas Show. Boy, oh, yeah. I'm Hollywood. <laughs> Tom Likas. 
1-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Oh, yeah, we've got all the modern technical gadgets here. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> they have spared no expense. <laughs> <laughs> right, we uh, started off talking about uh, scientific evidence is in. Here it is. <laughs> We're talking about the uh, story about uh, one night stands. The realities of one night stands have been researched uh, by uh, scientific researchers, and they have found that men lower their standards when it comes to one night stands. So don't assume we think you're attractive or think you're great or think you're wonderful because we have sex with you. We're out in the desert, and there's one lonely gas station with a filthy restroom up ahead, and we've pulled in. We're pulling in, and then we're pulling out. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Justin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Justin. Hey, Tommy. Hey, how are you doing? Doing great. Fabulous. Hey, I, I had this uh, little apartment uh, by, by Canyon and PCH, and women don't like to drive at night, so she, this girl... Uh, by where? Canaan and PCH. And oh, I see. Most, most women don't like to drive. I thought you said KNPCH. I thought that was a radio station. <laughs> no, but uh, so so she goes. Can you drive? Can you can you follow me home? I go no. You you you're, you, you want to stay over? That's fine. So she she stayed over and uh, she 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 took care of me. Uh, I don't know how you quite say it, but uh, she. She and she serviced that. you with six ways from Sunday is what she did, and you were very happy. Exactly. She left in the morning. I don't even remember her name, and uh, God bless her. There you go. <laughs> I have had sex with women who I didn't want them to know where I lived. <laughs> so here's what I did. I, I picked them up at a bar on the Sunset Strip, and they left their car parked at the bar. Right. And then I drove them up to my place in the Hollywood Hills, did them, go. then got up, got dressed, and drove them back down to their car. Well, I, I was renting a house in Woodland Hills, and I would take them a, a, a little back way and, and cut a couple corner, extra turns and corners just to make sure that they couldn't figure out where I lived. And they, they always ask, well, how do I get there? I go, y you were there once. You can get there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm busy. You Google me. <laughs> I'll be. On, I'm on. I'm on Google. Uh, find find out where I am. Oh and, baby, good times. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Yeah, I have done that. There are certain bars. Certain bars. I'm not going to say which ones because I I don't want to ruin my uh, my action. There are certain bars not far from my home in the Sunset Strip area where I can... Um, see, I'm getting distracted now. Something is happening over my peripheral vision here. Uh, there are certain bars where I know that I can pick up a chick, leave her car parked at the bar, drive her to my place. See, this is the exception to the rule about uh, bringing a chick to your place. If they cannot figure out where you live... Get them in, get them out. And that's literally what I do. So when you've heard me talk on the air about having a chick to my place, there are some people who say, hey, I thought you said don't bring a chick to your place. Those chicks don't know where I live and couldn't come back if they tried. They know where the bar is that I hang out. They know where the pickup location is. Uh, they, so they have an idea of what neighborhood I live in, but they don't know where I live. And they couldn't come back unless they met me at the bar again. This is, by the way, this is very useful for you guys. If you if you live in a place that's, you know, I, here in Southern California, we've got eight billion streets, and many of them look the same. Let's be honest. Anybody who's ever used the Thomas Guide knows why you use the Thomas Guide, because every street looks the same, right? You live in a neighborhood; it's very rare that there's a street that, you know, like like Sunset Boulevard uh, west of Crescent Heights. That that one is uh, pretty uh, uh, obvious. If you lived uh, in that area, you'd be easy to find again. But, you know, if you live on Kester Street in Van Nuys, I want to tell you something. <laughs> Not a lot of chicks are going to be able to find their way back there. 
So what you do is you pick, like, let's say you lived on Kester Street in Van Nuys, okay? You meet her at a bar. There's a bar over on Van Nuys Boulevard called a Pineapple Hill. Not that I've ever done this. You tell her to meet you at the bar. That, there's nice parking outside and everything. Then what you tell her is, you know, I don't live far from here, but you know what? You shouldn't drive. I don't want you getting a DUI. Let me take you over there. So you take her over to your... By the way, you're not drunk because she was at the bar waiting for you. So she was getting soused, getting herself all supple and ready to be done by you. Okay, so you show up relatively sober at, at Pineapple Hill or a bar like that, right? Pick her up, drive her back to your house, do her... And then take her back to her car. This way you have complete control of the situation. She's in, she's out, and she can't come back as a stalker or crazy because she doesn't know where you live. Really. This is going to come in very handy. Now, if you're lucky enough like me to live in the Hollywood Hills or somewhere near the Hollywood Hills near the Sunset Strip or near Hollywood Boulevard or something like that. Great. Lots of great bars down there. Don't even go to the bar. You know how much money you're going to save? Don't even go to the bar and buy her a drink. You go and you say, I'll meet you. I'll meet you. I'm going to be right outside the bar. Call her when you get there so she can come running out with a couple of drinks in her. Drive her back to your place. Do her and drop her back off at the place. And then you get the night free. No spooning, no hugging, no hanging out together. Nothing. No expectations of breakfast or brunch in the morning. Oh, God. Worst thing that ever happened to me, not only did a chick stay over once, this is why I don't do this anymore, it's when they get up in the morning and they call in sick to work. Ever had one of those? I just called in sick. We have the whole day together. Oh, my God. Just kill me. Jane on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, you're a god among men. Why, Why? thank you, Jake. <laughs> I love your show. Yeah, it's so true. You know, when you get desperate, uh, you, you start telling these women anything, you know. Uh, I always allude to, oh, I'm looking for a nice girl or, you know, something like that. And they always fall for it. Uh, it's hilarious. You know, they... Hey. Uh, a lot of times they I, say, you know what? I'm looking for a nice girl. It's just generally not the women I have sex with. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell, you know, and they always say, "Oh, you know, I'm not going home with you. I'm not, I'm not having sex with you." And I'm like, "Oh, don't be so presumptuous. I just like talking with you." And right. they end up going home with me. That's right, because they want to tell you they're not that kind of girl. Right. And, but you always know that the, every girl out there is about two shots away from being that kind of girl. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, as I always say, every time I look in a woman's eyes, I'm thinking to myself, you're about to do something you're going to regret for the rest of your life. <laughs> if I do it right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, something me and my buddy found out, you know, we used to... If you know, a woman doesn't uh, leave your home feeling used and humiliated, you're just not getting it done. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, some, you know, we. I want her self esteem to be even lower when she leaves than it was when she arrived. <laughs> oh, you're an evil man. <laughs> I love I'm it. not satisfied until you are feeling really bad about yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you would not believe how satisfying it is to know that a woman feels worse about herself. Because oh, yeah. of something yeah, I did. I've, I've had women say, you know, oh, that, pull that, oh, I, I, you know, I don't have to work today. And I always tell them, oh, but I do, you know. Yeah, but I do. That's right. <laughs> oh, good. You can drive me to work. Yeah, right. <laughs> Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.